Yes, it's our focus segment on the show. Uh, hopefully, we can play you the video of um, what the focus will be about today. It's um, a concern that has been raised about um, stickers, stickers for articulated vehicles, uh, more like a permit uh, for them to be able to do uh, their businesses across, um, across states, across local governments. Uh, going forward, we, we've been talking about um, about um, multiple taxation and how much uh, uh, the the committee set up by Mr. President on tax uh, intends to reduce or uh, completely eliminate multiple taxation. You see, it just it just exposes um, the the difficulty that they would have to face if the whole policy is not domesticated. Because uh, this um, extreme overtaxation we're talking about is domiciled in the states, uh, primarily in the states. If it is not Agbero, it is um, local government. If it's not TV permit, it is radio permit. It is not local government permit. It's, not, it's quite a number of permits that, that commercial vehicle owners would have to, uh, to pay through uh, you know, to get to get these things, uh, to get work done. Well, um, I'm hoping we can play the video, but just to also let you know, Abi Baruno uh, has joined me right, right about now on this segment. Abi Baruno was a former chief press secretary to uh, former governor Akiumi Ambade. Um, he's there with me uh, right now. Uh, Abi, so good to have you this morning. Welcome to News Up. How are you? I'm hanging in there. I, I hope you're hanging in there as well. Um, I hope the weather is not too harsh for you. I, I just woke up this morning and um, it, it seemed like every time I take a deep breath, uh, there's this cold sensation and it just gives you a tingling feeling. I, I hope I hope um, I hope I'm not I'm not I'm not falling sick, but I hope it's the weather. I hope the amateur is here. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. So is here. I need December. Yeah, yeah, so, you, can, you can say that so again. Morning, when, I, when, when, when the alarm rang, I was, I was, I was a bit... You struggled up. Stopped. You struggled yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, but I have to do it for you, for you guys, for Nigerians. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you. We appreciate yeah. what you do for us at Silverbed uh, Television and Silverbed News 24. Always a pleasure. I'm hoping that my director can play, play that video for me. The video I shared with you this morning. Uh, but then it really, really bothers me um, what um, commercial vehicle owners uh, have to go through, articulated vehicle owners have to go through uh, to, stay, to stay in business. Uh, we've often had this talk about uh, multiple taxation, and many people think um, it's, uh, I mean, it, go, it goes beyond what most of us can even imagine. Uh, the video I shared with you this morning, we had about 17 different stickers that an articulated vehicle would have to, you know, pay for to be able to do business. That is uh, domiciled in River State, actually. But, th but then it is not different across across board. It could, it could be more, even in Lagos. It's more or less like for a vehicle to transit from one local government to another, there has to be a permit. And that permit has to be like you have to pay a particular fine. And here we are talking about the cost of doing business in Nigeria, uh, little, little taxes like these are things that we cannot run away from. They, are, they have strong implications on the survival of businesses and the cost of doing business and the cost of surviving as a businessman in this country. Abib, your thoughts? No, I think you have said it all. You know, when I saw the video, even though I've not watched it, but I saw a glimpse of it. It's disturbing, very, very disturbing. And I was wondering, ah, what, what is going on here? If they pay all these, if they pay for all these uh, stickers, they are not going to survive. You pay for stickers, you buy fuel or diesel, you pay your staff, they are not going to survive. It will be extremely difficult for them to survive, for them to do business. We have, we have, we have said it all. So I don't know who's collecting this money and for which and for what purpose. You know, I think that should be a point of convergence. Government at the local level, state level, should be able to have an arrangement where they can coordinate these things. They can't be paying for everything. You know, there was a time, but I used to, at times, apply keke, keke marua, 
But now, okay, can I pay? David, if you know how much these guys are paying every day, you, know, you will not believe it. At every junction, they pay. And those guys are deduction to collect money from them. They had this, I was not wondering, I was asking them, how do you survive? They were just lamenting. These are the things you find in Nigeria. These are the things that make businesses to fail and to wind up. So I don't know what the government should do something about it. That should be deliberate effort by government to do something about these things. Small businesses, if you don't have small, small businesses, small scale businesses in the country, then we have a lot of problems in our hands. These are the people, these are the businesses that people at the lower there do when they move to the middle class. And if they are not there, because we are we are first seeing the disappearance of middle class in this country. We now have the rich and the poor. That is not good enough. So government at the local level and the state level <coughs> should do something about these things before we all find ourselves in a deep, deep mess. It's very, very, very worrisome. Of um, the Vanguard newspaper this morning. And the, yeah. the biggest story there is uh, poor Nigerians oh. hit 104 million. That's a report from World Bank. That, that what that tells me is that more Nigerians are falling into the poverty bracket. Poverty bracket. Very more, much more Nigerians are falling into the poverty bracket. That's um, coming from the from the World Bank. You see, so it, it's it's important that we begin to bring conversations like this yeah. uh, uh, to the public. I mean, uh, if, very, if, very if gov government very government important. should also should come to understand that part of their they are, part of their responsibility is the welfare of the citizens. And, and you don't rule a citizen, you don't lead a country, and the people are falling into the poverty bracket, all given to uh, uh, policy directions yeah. and uh, some, some form of um, lack of governance. Uh, because what we're talking about today is a form of um, lack of governance. Here we are talking about stickers. There are other, other, other fines or fees that this these people pay that is not recorded, that does not have, yeah. that is not, um, you know, it is not uh, receipted. It's not receipted. I mean, you drive on the Lake Yekwe Expressway and you see uh, maybe uh, private car owners that probably want to pick one or two people to argument for their fear. And they, they, are, they are parking and then the area boys are jumping at them to extort them of some money because they want to give some people a right to make some money to buy, to buy fuel. These are huge concerns that I think we should be looking at. But then my question is, do, does gov, do, would governments, governments, yes, would governments across, across the level, would they have the capacity or the sincerity uh, to deal with this menace? Because whether we like it or not, it is grinding, grinding businesses in this country. I think I have David, a first caller this David, morning. Abib, let, let's speak David. with a first caller. Let's speak with someone that's on, on the line. Um, we'll come back to you, Abib. Good morning, David. Speak to us. Uh -huh. Good morning, sir. Good morning. The the policy they are making is that that's the only problem in Nigeria. Is that why it's not Hello, I'm sorry, David. We can't stay on this call. Like, I completely apologize. It's not um, uh, viewers friendly. We apologize. Please do try and call call back. But, David, you might need to check up on your network because um, you seem to be having this concern almost every time you try to call on the show. Uh, please, uh, please do try and call back here. Yeah. Abib, you were going to say something. Yeah. Yes, I was saying that you mentioned two key things. You know, commitment and sincerity. The, the government, you know, I was a media man of a governor in this country, in Lagos State. It depends on the person in charge, you know. Most of these governors, most of these people at the local levels, the capacity is there. The capacity is there. They deliberately just want to make people suffer. You know, my boss, look at the record of my boss. We have the commitment and we have the sincerity. 
these two things are not mutually exclusive. They are symbiotic. The government in the country, what we are seeing now is that police, political expediency eh, have taken over everything. Because of politics, they want votes. So give this to the, the, the job, job for the boys. So these people do anything they like without being called to question, without being called to, to account. So what, we, what you see is lack of sincerity. Eh? And when there's, when there's lack of sincerity, the people suffer. That's misgovernance. The lack of purpose. The, the, the place being a mess, be it local level and the state level. So I, I agree with you. You know, the, there is capacity, the capacity is there. But they, they just want to deliberately not to do the right thing. So there is no sincerity. All is going on. I think there is sincerity and commitment. We will still be in this hole. You know, we'll be in this hole. I don't know why, how can they survive? If people that are bringing trucks, bringing loads of, of uh, things, it be stone, cement, or sands to your local area, they, are, they pay. These persons are at the corner, calling money from them. Where is this money going to? No, you don't run the country like that. Yes. A, a be, this thing should be free line. Yeah. Let them know about their pay. So that if you not kill their business. Uh, can we clear clear with you. We have we have we have two colors waiting waiting this morning. Let's speak with Okaro. Okaro, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yes. I think this topic is a very important topic. We cannot imagine a government who will set up agencies to escort the top these people. You can, let's take example of a local content development board. Do you know that every job you execute to the oil and gas company, you pay some certain percentage to local NCD upfront. You don't even need to be done this at first. Now that same local content management board is not even asking Nigerians to bring, bring equipment certificate before you can even tender for a job or you win a job. And these are Nigerians that the board was created to develop. We are not talking of foreign companies. We are talking of local Nigerians who are employing Nigerians who are also taking care of their families, who are paying taxes, who are registered with the DPR. Now the question you ask yourself, how many Nigerians can you see on the street that have been trained by even the local content management board? None. The money they are getting from every invoice to the oil and gas industry, what are they doing with it? So the government should look deep. It's not to establish agency at all and allow the agency to be over exercising their function to make life unbearable, create unemployment. I think that is something the government needs to do, both at federal, state, and local government level. Thank you. Speak with our next caller. Good morning. Good morning. From Uche from Adam. Ah, uh, Uche, good morning. Yeah. My brother, sometimes I don't blame these lawmakers. I blame the populace. You see, we don't ask questions. The way they are conducting public hearings, both federal and the you know, state uh, lawmakers, you don't see them going to the uh, public when they are doing what? Conducting public hearings. That is the problem. Most of these laws, they will be in their chamber. They enact a law. For me and you, we won't make any impact. That is the problem. Until the populace, you know, know their rights, stand for their rights, we won't get it right in this country. God bless you people. Yeah, from Abia. Uh, let's, let's play that, or that video again, and uh, probably let's listen to the audio behind the video so we can understand what we're talking about. Oh, all right, um, that is a bit of a concern. So um, you, you've, you've listened to the callers, Ab Abib. I, I think uh, you now begin to wonder how much work the, the Presidential Committee on Tax would have to do because um, these are the form of taxes that directly impact the people very negatively. I, I had the privilege of speaking with um, 
Tawo Oyedele a couple of, of, of weeks ago. And I, I asked him, I said, how do you intend to bring this? How do you intend to make the states, the states buy into these uh, policies that you're working on in terms of trying to eliminate multiple taxation? And, and trust me, he believes that it's a huge task that all they will keep doing is hoping that the state governments would buy buy into their initiative. Let's speak again with David. David of uh, Ido State, I hope I hope your line is better now. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, David. Okay, huh? What I was saying the policy of the government they are making conformity to increase in Nigeria. Because they are not even concerned at all about what is going on in this uh, country. Okay, look at now. We cover both the state government and the federal government. They have uh, people putting everywhere to extract money from people in the name of uh, that letter or revenue. At least, you see the problem that the foreign subsidy are brought to Nigeria. They are still making more money or more money. At the end of the day, they put their own money to provide for people here and there. They will keep people tickets. At the end of the day, everything will be on the head of the common people who buy the market. So the poverty is, is still because of their policy they are making. That just matters this money. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. I, I think we, we are all on the same page here. Uh, it's a subtle way of impoverishing the people. It's a subtle way of bringing poverty uh, to the people, which is something that I think... Um, uh, government should take a lot more seriously. Uh, Abib, I still want to stick by what I said initially, what we talked about, the sincerity of government, which you further elaborated, given to your experience uh, whilst, whilst in government. Uh, but then it further, it further uh, it, you know, it gives credence to the fact that we are in a very dark, dark situation. I mean, it's looking like there's nothing that can be done about, about this. I, I can remember vividly in, in Lagos State, there was a time when the, the government came out and says um, every vehicle would have to pay a particular sum of money uh, as, a, as a fee for the entire day. And um, I'm sure vehicle owners, they all celebrated, celebrated it. Uh, but suddenly, uh, the other side came up and said, that is government that the, the vehicle owners will still have to pay their own, their own fees. I know you know who I'm talking about. There's a particular gentleman that has this group that's in charge of this, this boys. Uh, and they, they insisted that this vehicle owners would still have to pay, pay, pay their, their fees. I mean, so like I, like I said earlier, it behoves on, on governments, government sincerity uh, to deal with this, this issue. Uh, this issue. I, I feel really, really sad. I don't own a, a, an articulated vehicle out there, uh, but trust me, with the current state that we are in the country, the difficulties that uh, vehicle owners face to first fill, fill their vehicles, move to move around to do businesses, it is you and I, the common man on the street, that suffers, that will, that will bear the brunt, on, I mean, in the very last. It is you and I, because th those costs will be trans translated to uh, the final users. That is what it is. So, and even these gentlemen that think they are doing themselves a favor, uh, their family members are equally going to suffer uh, from, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a circle. It would affect their family members. It would affect them also in the future. So, I don't know if you have a final thought on this so that we can wrap up and look at the papers. It's a really, really sad place we find ourselves as a country and as a people. My thought is, uh, is very simple. It's for the government to be more forward-looking, more pragmatic, organize itself, coordinate its staff system, and, and show, display a lot of display and demonstrate sincerity. Let people know that this thing you are doing is for them. People cannot be paying, you can't over, over tax them. It has never worked. Yes, taxes are that's very, very important in any nation for development and growth. People, people should pay their fair share of taxes. But it, should, it must not be overdone, it, it, it should not be an overkill that it will affect their livelihood, affect their existence, and affect their businesses. So I, I, I think the government should be up and doing and address these things. It's very, very critical to the growth of this country. Very critical for the survival of businesses in this country. Abibaruna, thank you so very much. Uh, thank you all our callers.
uh, on this segment. We're really hoping that um, uh, we probably would get desired results going forward.